Hello, my name's Alan Foom, and today I'm going to talk about interviews, particularly in this time of COVID, which is more challenging than the traditional times. So life's a pitch, and you need to come across well. So interviewers, what do they want to know? It's a two-way discussion. Our organization's got a problem. You might be the solution. So you've also got a problem because you want to get a job, for either because you're unhappy in your present job or because you don't have one. So what are the interview is looking for? Can you do the job effectively? Can you demonstrate the skills that you say you have? Because they've read your resume, they've read your CV, they like you. So you've already got quite a long way up the funnel. Will you be able to fit the, into, into, your, into their organisation? It's not altogether obvious from a CV, so they need to meet you in person or online. Uh, do you have the capacity and the flexibility to grow and develop? Now, there's evidence of that on your CV, but can you... Uh, walk the walk as well as talk the talk. And are there any gaps, inconsistencies or red flags? Again, need to see if there's a problem. If there's a problem that's visible, here's your chance to address it. So what do you want to know? Because you've got a choice. You don't have to join this organisation. Join another organisation or you can buy your time. Now, is this place right for you? Is this job as advertised? Will this job give me what you want and need? Will I fit in here? Will I be happy here? Are there any red flags for me? So, if you don't feel comfortable with this, don't have to go ahead. So, there are different types of interview, and this has changed a little bit during the time of COVID, but it's kind of the same. So, initially, a screening. It's basically, are you as advertised? You know, why are you interested in this job? And it's often done remotely anyway. That was done before COVID, so people would do it talk, short, talk, talk to you on the phone, or maybe talk to you via video. Then you have a first interview. So that's general discussion with a hiring manager and usually an HR representative. It's to confirm that you're suitable, interesting and interested. You know, then we take the next stage. Might be some aptitude tests. Um, give them some sort of cover. Or to be just confirm that you have the skills that you need to have. And then you have subsequent interviews. Um, so they maybe include meeting with the hiring management. So by this stage, the hiring manager said that probably decided that you're one of the people that they want to have. So either they want to whittle down a final choice. Alternatively, the hiring manager want to, might want to sell you to the higher ops just to get the rubber stamp. And then there's confirmation interview, which is the acceptance, negotiating a package, confirm references, etc. That's the final rubber stamp to get you there. Now, it could take a long time. Uh, there's a person I coached and it took him eight interviews to get through. Lovely bloke, and he's doing really well where he is now, but eight interviews for someone of his capability? But that's the organisation, that's the organisation. So, in the remote world. Now, BC, before COVID, you would tend to have an initial screening that will take place over the phone. Division process for everybody, for both the candidate and recruiter. You don't need to take any time out, uh, you know, half an hour, uh, sometimes even less, occasionally a bit more. Uh, Almost always over the phone, occasionally might be done via Skype or Zoom or, or Teams or one of the other video things. And now we're in CE, the COVID era. So remote interviewing is, a lot, is used a lot more. Generally now for first interviews, sometimes subsequent interviews. Safety and convenience, again, you don't have to go into an office, you don't have to take the public transport if it's a public transport location. And the interviewers don't get exposed to a whole bunch of different people. Um, and it's convenient. A lot more of that's done using video conferencing, which is something that people had not used quite that much before. So Zoom, WebEx, FaceTime, Teams, Skype, etc., the whole gamut. And you might not actually meet until you get the final confirmation. That has happened to someone I know. Um, it's all OK, but again, some people might not feel comfortable with that. I don't feel comfortable without that. But that's life. That's the current situation. We have to adjust to it. So key points for remote interviewing. So this is uh, done by a friend of mine, Nina Len, who's a professional coach. And it's based on some of her ideas, which I've sort of moved forward a bit. So location, tech, lighting and camera, practice, enthusiasm, energy and passion, dress code and preparation. I wish the most important is preparation. So location, make sure your space is as decluttered as possible. Do you want to have a clean background? And beware distracting backgrounds such as bookshelves. But if you do have a bookshelf, at least put some intelligent looking books on your bookshelf. You know, someone calls it a shelfie. I mean, you always sort of look, oh, what's he got or she's got on her bookcase? Uh, try to have no distractions. Lock the door. Keep out the noise. Uh, no pets, children, spouses, parents. 
there was one young man who I know who was interviewing for a graduate trainee job, and uh, his mum came in, plopped a cup of coffee next to his uh, computer. Uh, suitable chair. If you're going to be talking to someone for a while, having a, a nice office chair that's comfortable is, is important because you want to feel uh, at ease. Technology. Check that your software and hardware work, that your computer is charged, that it's plugged in. Uh, get yourself a good webcam rather than the one that comes with the computer. They're not that expensive. And get a microphone or headset so that uh, you sound a lot clearer. Turn off notifications or beeps because there's nothing more annoying than having an email floating across the screen. Um, join a conference a little early, you know, two to four minutes, just to make sure everything works. And gets your nerves in, in a good place. And also, just as a backup, have your phone number handy and have their phone number handy so that if things fail, you can at least talk to them on the telephone. Lights, camera, action. So having adequate lighting, there are two pictures of me at the bottom, one with bad lighting, one with better lighting. So make sure you're well lit. You're not being interviewed for witness protection. Also place the camera at eye level so that people do not look up your nostrils. If they do look up your nostrils, get one of these Remington trimmers uh, to make sure that your nostrils are tidy. But better just put your camera at eye level so they don't have to see them. Practice, practice, practice. Now, talking on a video call is not natural for most people. We all have verbal tics, the ums, the ers, etc. Uh, people need to consider how to look and sound. So practice common questions, record, get feedback from uh, friends and family and tweak. The things that we're just not aware of, that we need to, I you know, I move my head a lot, um, that we just need to get into perspective and try not to make them too distracting. Then energy and passion. Now that's a lot harder to come across on the telephone, on the telephone or in video than it is in real life. Uh, listener, it's not easy to get the feedback from the, from the interviewer uh, as it is to face to face. So there's a danger of you interrupting as well, because you know, there's a bit of a time lag. Beware of your enthusiastic hands. Or a scared monotone, you know, the rabbit and headlights, because you're frightened. Even though in real life you would not be like that, because it's a nervous situation, you tend to look a bit more nervous than you would do. So you need to come across a professional so that's willing, able, competent, knowledgeable, enthusiastic, and reliable. So it's not always easy, but people may make some allowances for that. Then dress codes. So try to wear a plain or you know light striped uh, blouse or shirt. Uh, stripes and check, you know, narrow stripes, check. They may strobe on video. They're not, they don't do it in real life, but obviously on, you're on video and they may be distracting. Good grooming, so give, you know, trim, you know, hair, makeup, etc. Just look professional. As for dress code, uh, there's a little thing at the bottom. Uh, don't quite recommend white tie and tails, and you shouldn't wear that uh, in daytime anyway, because that's an evening dress. Uh, Somewhere between semi-formal and casual is, is fine. I'd err towards the side of formality. Uh, obviously depends on the organisation. People are aware that you're at home, so it's a different situation to what you would do in face-to-face -face where you would wear a suit. But people are impressed if you look, if you've made the effort. And don't look ultra-casual or sloppy. That's not the right look. So you want to be a professional. Now for the most important thing, preparation. So preparation... If that's bad, you get poor performance. So you need to research the organization, work out the answers to the questions, deliver a consistent, coherent, and positive message, as you would do in real life, face-to-face. -face. Prepare a set of questions that you need to have answers for. At the end of an interview, somebody always asks, do you have any questions for us? And there's only one correct, there was only one wrong answer to that, which is, no, I don't. So always have some questions, even if they've answered most of them, just tick them off. So just make sure that's there. In real life, you would engage positively with all the people you contact. If you're in a multi-panel interview where there's uh, about seven or eight of them on a, on a Zoom call, just need to engage with all of them. That's a little bit harder. And just try to be calm, and the more you, you practice, the better you'll get at it. So where do you do your research? So the company websites, the press, online, so LinkedIn, Twitter, YouTube, Glassdoor, which is TripAdvisor for jobs, although I take that with a bit of a pinch of salt because disgruntled employees do put bad stuff on there. So again, just take it for that. Personal network. If you know people in the organization, you know people who've worked in the organization, have dealt with them, that's always a good sign. And the job description. Make sure you truly understand it and don't project your own desires onto a job description. 
The key product out of all of that is a crib sheet. Now, the advantage here is that you can have the crib sheet as a piece of paper, uh, not actually on your computer, but printed off in front of you. So what would you have on a crib sheet? So this is based on the idea of a fellow volunteer called Clive Stokes. So you have the company logo, took a little bit of company financials, where the office is, key issues affecting the company, interview logistics. Obviously, in real life, you would have how do, how do you get there and who's interviewing you. A little bit about company products. Who owns them? You know, are they listed? Are they owned by Mr. Big? Are they owned by private equity? Are they a foreign subsidiary? And a reminder of what you have to offer. So put all that on uh, on, a, on a crib sheet together with important questions to be prepared to be professional. Then a checklist just before you start. So just to think, why did you apply for this role? You know, why us? So know that reason, articulate it. Why do you want to, what makes the organization appealing to you? You know, what's that, what, what's the special that they've got that, that brings you there? How can you add value in there? What can you do to solve their problems? Again, they've got a problem. You might just be the solution to it. Then, what's your understanding of the role? What's your interpretation of the job description? So this is a chance to ask questions to clarify any mistakes. A friend of mine, I call him Sam, uh, wanted to get back to London. He, uh, he interviewed with a company that had its headquarters in German Street. Now, uh, he was living near Woking in Surrey. The headquarters, the back office was in Woking. He wanted to move back to London uh, for personal reasons. Uh, they got him to start in Woking. He moved to another company in London within six months. Because he didn't ask, they didn't ask him. People just assume different things. So get the assumptions done. Out. Do you know your CV inside out? Can you talk them through it? Do you know about the company? Research. Do you know about the interviewer? Nothing wrong with interview, researching the interviewer. Look them up on LinkedIn. See who they are. And is the tech working? Just make sure everything is cool. So best of luck for your interview. Be prepared. Be calm. Be professional, be friendly, be keen, get that job. Well done. Best of luck.